it's very clear that under our laws, you can be a dual citizen, but still be a justice of the Supreme Court. At the Supreme Court in, in April last this year, delivered a judgment to that effect. So the nominee who came yesterday is qualified under our laws. Not to the fact that he holds a Canadian citizenship, but for the judgment in April, he wouldn't have qualified to be a Supreme Court judge in Ghana. There are still those who hold the view that the Supreme Court actually did this in anticipation of the fact that there may be an appointment of this nature in the near future. I have no evidence to that effect. It may be by co mere coincidence, and people may, may conjecture, but there's no evidence to that effect. So let's leave it for now. If you follow his conversation, he hasn't uh, prosecuted a case in Ghana before, he hasn't practiced in Ghana before as a lawyer. Was the guarantee that he would do due justice to issues that come to him from the Ghanaian jurisdiction. Yes, yesterday you listened to me, you watched him, an excellent professor. He knows his staff. In fact, he was we're in, the, in the law school together, even though he's one year behind me, and I know his worth. In terms of his ability to deliver as a judge, I can assure you, he, he has every quality that any judge should possess in the dispensation of justice, and I trust him that you do his job as a judge. But I'm sure prosecution differs from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. If he hasn't had full knowledge about what we do here, will he be in position to deliver? Fortunately, he is based in Canada, right? Canada is a common law jurisdiction. And so those of us who are called to the bar in Ghana, that's why we can appear, or we can go to other countries. If you want to practice, you go to some process that you can practice because we use similar procedure and similar laws. So there's nothing untold about his knowledge when it comes to how he's able to do his cases in Ghana as a judge.